Hi folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatorius. So apologies for not doing any videos for the last few days. I've been very busy with other things and um, one of the things I've been busy with was doing a TV project which I'll um, talk a little bit more about um, as I'm able to, certain aspects of it, but one thing um, that I want to talk about is the subject of damaging swords on armour. Now, one of the comments that often comes up under my videos is regarding edge damage and for any of you who have questions about so-called flat parrying or edge parrying or using the edge in defensive actions I've done a series of videos in the past about this just search for um, edge parrying or uh, edge damage or indeed flat parrying in my videos and you will find these videos quite quickly in those videos I summarise the reasons why it's a sort of silly debate and it's a misnomer. It's something that came about, seems to have come about perhaps in the sort of early 2000s, um, partly as the results of um, the published works and video works of John Clements from the um, from Armour, uh, formerly um, the Hacker. Um, and John Clements is a big exponent of not using the edge in defensive actions, so-called flatter strong uh, flat parrying. Now, not saying that that's um, necessarily wrong, um, but people who maybe don't understand all of the sources behind this tend to get into their head, ah, okay, so you don't do defensive actions with the edge, you only do defensive actions with the flat. And this is fundamentally completely wrong. Um, most documented sources, in Europe at least, for the use of swords, use the edges, both front and back, for defensive actions. Yes, there are some sources which use the flat additionally to the edges as well, and most famously the Langmesser sources. And a Langmesser has what's called a Nagel, which just simply means nail in German, because it's a German weapon. Um, but they have a nail sticking out of the side of the guard and that facilitates, if you put the thumb up against the flat, certain types of flat parries, we could call them that. Um, but these are specific actions and they're in a minority. If we just look at the cross-hilted sword for a second, of course we've got two guards front and back and the Langmesser, which is one of the few things, one of the few sources we have which actually specifies using the flat for defensive actions, has an additional guard sticking out of the side to make that safe, to facilitate that. If you don't have that, if you don't have a side ring or a, a, a shell perhaps or a nagel sticking out of the side, quite simply if you try and receive a blow on your flat, if you don't do it right, you're going to lose your fingers. Okay, um, so. Very simply, it's a very risky thing to do, and you know, you just look at the design of the sword, the cross guard points in the same direction as the edges, and therefore, it should be of no surprise to us whatsoever that the edges are what's usually specified when they specify anything at all, are what's usually specified to encounter the other person's blade with. Now that doesn't always mean 90 degree to 90 degree contact, it can sometimes be at angles and all this kind of thing, but this is not despite the fact that I've witted on for quite a long time about it already, this is not a video about flat or edge parrying. It's simply to state that one of the reasons why a lot of people um, raise this topic is they go, ah, oh, but if you use the edges of your sword to defend with, won't your sword get damaged? And the answer is, yes, your sword will get damaged. But one of the points I made in my previous videos, and that's what this is about, is that your sword will get damaged most with most things that you do if you're using your sword for fighting it's gonna hit stuff and when swords hit stuff they get damaged and this is something that most people who don't use swords on a regular basis can't necessarily immediately conceive and get their heads around. The fact of the matter is that it doesn't matter how good quality a sword is, it could be the best quality handed down for generations Japanese tachi, tashi or wakazashi or katana, or it could be a, um, a European long sword or a, a Victorian sabre or a Renaissance side sword. It actually doesn't matter how good quality or where the sword's from or what type of steel it's made from, this kind of stuff, if you hit things with a sharp piece of steel, that sharp piece of steel will get damaged to varying degrees. Now obviously, if you hit a, um, a soft piece of meat that's just got no bone in it, nothing, just a soft piece of meat, a lump of pork, if you hit it with a sharp sword, yes, your sword isn't really going to take any noticeable or notable damage. 
However, in literal terms, if you cut a piece of meat 50,000 times, eventually your edge will get blunt. Ergo, every time you hit that soft piece of meat, what apparently soft piece of meat, you are damaging your edge. Now, anyone who does test cutting with sharp swords, if you cut, for example, cardboard tubes, Cardboard tubes are sometimes used as a demonstration of uh, cutting skill um, and they're actually quite a tough target to cut through but they also blunt swords really quickly. And there we go, cardboard is very clearly not as hard <laughs> and not as tough as steel is. Carbon steel, hardened carbon steel. But nevertheless the cardboard with repeated use will blunt the sword's edge. In the same way, steel scabbards, uh, I don't actually have one behind me for a change, but steel scabbards will contribute towards the bluntening of swords. Brass scabbards, a little bit less, will contribute to bluntening of swords. Leather scabbards are good at preserving sword edges, but again, if you're repeatedly putting a sword in and out of a scabbard, if it's a wood line scabbard, that wood will blunten the sword eventually. The wood scabbard might be better at preserving the edge of the sword than a steel scabbard is, but nevertheless, any contact, any friction repeated with the edge of that sword will blunten it. Now, so when people panic about getting their swords damaged, you have to realise that when you're in combat, there are a great number of things that your sword edge might encounter. First of all, even if you're hitting someone who completely fails to defend themselves, you're going to hit a person's body. That person's body might, believe it or not, damage your sword. People are full of bones. Now, bones in living people, and again, this relates to a filming um, session I did the other day, bones in creatures that are either living or have not been dead for very long are actually relatively soft. If you cut through living or recently dead bone, it does not damage your edge in the way that really dead or boiled bone would. Um, most people's um, exposure to bone is from bone that's been dead for a long time or from a butcher shop or it's cooked bone or this kind of stuff and that tends to be harder and more brittle, much harder and much more brittle than recently dead or living bone. Um, however, bone is far more, uh, is far tougher and more resistive than muscle is. So when you cut through a body, yes that will have some effect on your sword. Now people, generally speaking, are wearing clothes. Um, so if you're in combat and you hit someone in clothes, there are all sorts of things on a person's clothing that might damage the edge of your sword. Buckles, buttons, um, you know, any, any sort of bit of armour. Now, think about on a battlefield. On a battlefield, do you think that most soldiers might be wearing soft woolly jumpers and uh, maybe, you know, tracksuits, maybe soft things that won't damage your sword? No, of course. People on battlefields tend to be wearing equipment and armour that are this made of the sort of materials to help protect them. Therefore, when you hit those people with your sword, it will get damaged. Now, so one of the things, so this is one of the major things that I think is kind of ludicrous when people go, oh, you never defend with your edge because you'll damage your edge. But you'll also damage your edge when you hit someone wearing basically anything. And most soldiers will be wearing things that are really quite damaging to your edges. Just imagine someone is dressed from head to foot in mail, aka chain mail. Just think about that for a minute. What's chain mail made of? Iron, yeah? Iron, sometimes steel. What's your sword made of? Steel. You're hitting two bits of steel into each other, okay? So very clearly that's going to result in edge damage. Now I'm going to come back to that in a minute, just to hold that thought in the back of your brain. Think about the fact also that as well as just hitting a person, most people, at least if they see a blow coming, are going to try and defend themselves. Now if they try and defend themselves with the flat of their sword, or with the shaft of their spear, or the, the side of their halberd, or um, you know, whatever. Uh, a shield, um, for example, a shield which has various iron fittings on the boss and on the, around the edge maybe, and all this kind of stuff. If they try and defend themselves in any way, yet again, the sharp edge of your sword is gonna hit that stuff and get damaged, okay? So just to reiterate this, hopefully I'm being completely clear. Whatever you do to try and preserve your edges, they're going to get damaged within the course of normal combat, okay? At least if you're fighting people who are trying to defend themselves, 
okay? Your edges are gonna get damaged. Now, let's go back to that mail or chain mail point that I made. So, what I was doing in filming the other day, so I was doing a series of tests with uh, a series of weapons, mm, swords, arrows, spears, um, most of it was done with swords and arrows, and I was doing various things to a recently, um, recently expired, shall we say, um, animal carcass which had clothing and armour on it. And um, against my better judgement, um, and under the goading of the um, director, <laughs> Uh, having done various tests on the animal, which I won't go into, uh, in the dead animal that is, um, I won't go into the details of that for now because when I'm able to say more about that there's a lot of interesting things to say about that. Um, I was goaded into hitting mail, chain mail armour, put over clothing or padding, put over the animal to see and measure and document the effects of a hard sword blow on mail armour that was appropriately put over a padded layer, thin padded layer. It wasn't a gamberson, it was essentially like, uh, well it was like a thin, it was like an arming doublet or a thick clothing, should we say, underneath. So we're simulating maybe, let's say, Viking, for the purposes of this discussion, let's say Viking era or Norman era um, armour. We're dealing with mail over layers of clothing, maybe thin padding, but not gamberson yet, okay, over a body. Um, and what happened to the body underneath? Absolutely nothing, okay? I, I was only cutting, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't thrusting for very specific reasons, again, which I won't go into, but I cut at that male and I cut it hard, hard as I could, and it, yes, it damaged the male, um, it, but it didn't, it, it bruised the body underneath, essentially, okay? So under normal circumstances, if you're cutting with a sword, and bearing in mind a sword isn't actually a very good percussive weapon, a lot of people say a lot of rubbish about swords used as bludgeoning in instruments. If you want to use a bludgeoning instrument in warfare, you use a mace or an axe or a warhammer, something that's good as a bludgeoning instrument because it has a lump of weight at the end of a lever. That's not what a sword is, okay? In actual fact, the sword's heaviest end is the back end. Swords are designed to cut and slash and be nimble, okay? They're not designed as bludgeoning instruments, not like you would see in Battle of the Nations type stuff, okay? They're not, maybe a falchion, debatably it is, but again, that's for a different discussion, but a normal sword, of certainly of the type I'm holding here, is not a bludgeoning instrument. So essentially, I damaged the mail, but I, I didn't really stand any chance of cutting through the mail. And um, I, the bit that I'm finally working around to is I damaged my sword. And I did know that this was going to happen, but I thought I've got this wonderfully sharpened sword and I'd made sure before the experiment that we did really, really sharp. I'd sharpened it with my own stone, spent some time on it. I'd done various things to the flesh of, of, the, uh, of the test subject with, with the sword. Um, and then I thought, well, what the hell, the, the least sharp of the two edges, because you, no matter how much you sharpen a double-edged sword, there's always one edge which is a little bit sharper than the other. So I took the slightly less sharp, although still sharp, edge, and I repeatedly hit that mail. I must have hit the mail with the padding underneath about 20 times, possibly, possibly 30 times, yeah, probably more like 30 times. And this is the bit I'm not sure you're going to be able to see on camera, but I'm going to try and enable you to. So, if you look at this distance, I'll try and get close so the camera actually focuses on the blade, right. There we go, you can start to see it now. Can you see, if I put my hand behind, there we go. If you look at that edge, you can see it is chewed up. It's not a great big mess. I have to say it's a little bit tidier than it was at its worst because I actually started, before I thought to film this video, I actually started tidying up the edge again. But you can probably see the light catching along there. And it just looks like, exactly like you'd expect, it looks like a sharp edge that's been mashed into something a few times. Now, a few interesting things about this. First of all, this edge got damaged very quickly against male armour. Therefore, if you're using a sharp sword, 
Um, if you can possibly aim at something that's not covered in mail or not covered in armour, then do it. And you know, surprise, surprise, that's exactly what the historical treatises show. They show when you're fighting someone in armour, aim for the bits where the armour isn't. Now there are of course times when you're half sorting where the only place to go, yes this is a sharp sword, yes I am grabbing it, I'm fine with that, um, but there are the only places you can stab and you can go for are places which have mail on them but they don't have plate on them. And that of course is what you're aiming to do, you're aiming to go for the weakest link in that defensive system, which in some cases might be the male armpits or the groin or whatever. Um, but however, you have to bear in mind that if you're hitting armour with a sword, whether it's the point or the edge incidentally, it will get damaged to some degree. Um, so there we go, that's the sort of damage that you can expect from hitting 20 or 30 times with against mail, aka chain mail, uh, with a sharp sword. It will mash the edge up. Now, an interesting thing, does that make the sword useless? No. We're still left with a wedge edge that's still fairly narrow. God, this is taking guts to do this. It is no longer sharp enough to cut my hand on. <laughs> if I go a bit lower it is, and if I go a bit higher it is, but what, with the centre of percussion, thankfully, which was the correct bit that I was hitting the male with, um, it's not quite sharp, like it's not sharp enough to slice you just doing that. However, if I hit this with some force into my arm, yes, it would chop into my arm. So it's by no means a useless weapon at this point. It's just less effective than it was before I hit the male. Um, I would also say, in terms of fixing that edge, it's fairly easy. These are not deep notches. What's actually happened is, if you imagine my fingers there are the edge, it's literally just folded that edge over in, in zigzaggy in different ways. Um, and so when I go to correct that edge, I'll be pushing some of that metal back into line again. That incidentally is what a sharpening steel is for that you would use with your uh, carvery set. Uh, the sharpening steel isn't really, um, is really for pushing those misaligned bits back into line. So it's not, you're not honing so much as realigning that edge. Um, so there we go. The fact is, if you hit armour with a sword, it will get damaged, regardless of whether you flat parry or edge parry or any other kind of parry. If you're hitting someone who's wearing defensive stuff, your edge is going to get screwed up anyway. However, it doesn't get drastically screwed up. It only gets screwed up so it's not as sharp as it was, it's still a relatively effective weapon, and it's relatively easy to fix that edge up. But from an archaeological, from an experimental archaeology point of view, I think it's really, really interesting because it does show that mail really does a great job, but equally it shows you that this is the type of damage you could expect to see on a sword that had been used in combat against people wearing chainmail. So there we go guys, I hope that's been somewhat interesting and I'll see you for my next video. Cheers folks! Thank you for watching, please subscribe, follow us on Facebook, you can buy t-shirts through Spreadshirt, support us on Patreon or follow us on Pinterest. Thank you.